That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about When Evil Lurks, the sixth film directed by Damien Rugna, which just premiered at the 2023 Toronto International Film Festival. It is being released courtesy of IFC Films and Shudder on October 6th, 2023. Do I know any of this other director's work? I don't, but uh, his last title sounds interesting, Satanic Hispanics. Oh, yeah. The premise, in a remote village, two brothers find a demon-infected man just about to give birth to evil itself. They decide to get rid of the man, but merely succeed in helping him to deliver the inferno. That's not a very good uh, <laughs> synopsis. Uh, what's your pull quote? Uh, Though it sports some arrestingly violent moments and odd gruesome touches, Regna's zombie plague tale is populated with frustratingly insipid characters who are ultimately less interesting than those who are undead. Mine, When Evil Lurks, could have worked so well as a black comedy. Unfortunately, it wants to be taken seriously, and I cannot. There you go. So the story focuses on two brothers. What are their names? Pedro and Yimmy. So they're in Argentina and like this farming community town. Uh, it's modern time, and they're out, and they find a dead body. Cut in half. And his body appears to have been severed in half, like not by an animal, like something crazy. And, and they see that this body has the ID of this woman, they know. So they go find her. And she's like, oh yeah, that's the guy who was supposed to come kill my son. Okay? So the son is this big bloated mess, like bl bloated as in infected with pus. He's been like that for a year lying in this bed and the mother believes he is uh, possessed by a demon. So the body has to be disposed of in a very particular way, which is why they didn't call like the authorities. So this person who we see was cut in half is called a cleaner. But of course he didn't make it uh, to take care of this lady's son. So the two brothers decide to do it. And another man. And another child. man. Yeah. And as they're transporting the body in this pickup truck, in the bed of a pickup truck, the body, once they get to their destination, they see the body fell off the truck. So they kind of panic, but they see that like the, this, whatever it is, demon zombie virus is spreading. So the one brother, Pedro, goes to his ex-wife's house because he wants to take her and their children to safety. But chaos ensues because... The dog becomes infected, which then causes like little girl to get infected. Now they're on the run. They end up at Pedro's mama's house. Then they end up finding this lady who knows a little bit about this stuff. And she says, oh, you have to find the original, which is that big bloated mess we saw in the beginning. So they go into town and find this thing. But we see that a bunch of kids are guarding it, not unlike um, Village of the Dam. Like, it's very much like Village of the Dam. Who, who could kill a child. And they are not successful in killing uh, the source demon. So we see Pedro back at home with his one son who appears like they're trying to paint the son as like being... They he's, say he's autistic. Oh, they do know. say he's autistic. He's nonverbal. And initially someone says, oh, because of his like mental state... Mirta says that, yeah. He cannot be infected. But in the very end, we see that he has been infected. And it looks like he ate someone. The end. So there's no hope. Like, this virus is just going to spread. Um, what did you think about the tone of this movie? Because I felt like it, it, like it should have been a comedy. The way it's shot and the way everyone's acting. Well, yeah. The women are all over-the-top hysterical, if you will. Screaming uh, in, in ways that... I guess adds to the chaotic tone and the stress, but it makes everybody seem kind of dumb. It's laughable. It's laughable. But there are no jokes. It's not supposed to be funny. I think Pedro makes a lot of really dumb choices that kind of robs the film of any anxiety because right away you're like, oh, I'd, I really don't care what happens to him. Uh, this is Shudder's first Spanish language production. So there's that. Uh, so... I always find it curious in mo stories like this, because we reviewed the one, um, it's like an Indian horror film, where the mom makes this vegan poo-poo platter. And the oh, it does. lurks inside. Mm -hmm. It lives within or whatever. It lurks, or, yeah, it lives inside, sorry. Lurks, lurks. But, like movies like this or that where like, 
the people know a lot about what's going on. So in this movie, the community seems to be very knowledgeable about demons and what demons do. They have a protocol. They even have a protocol, which I find funny because when it, when it actually goes down, it seems like no one knows what to do. And there's even this complicated list of seven rules that they keep kind of referencing that, that all seem kind of dumb because one of the... One of them is like you can't be near electricity because so Myrta who ends up is apparently an old friend a friend with benefits with Jimmy Is, is they, right. they go find her has been living without electricity and like, The seven rules thing seems silly because I thought that that should have been introduced much earlier in the film They're kind of but we don't get it till like the two-thirds point rattled or off later the, random by uh, Pedro's mother And then they're not even given to us in a like a lot like the yeah, they're kind of like rattled off and, randomly but we know like don't go near electricity don't be afraid to die don't say their names like yeah what, what are some other ones do you no. even remember no like they're not even memorable what um, is more memorable is that apple ice cream that i've never tried that sound interesting it was green in color mm -hmm. yeah that was interesting that's probably yeah, the most would, interesting part of this movie i would try that and then they serve it in like a styrofoam cup that in the title which i keep wanting to call it when evil lurks or, or where, where evil lurks and i kept getting that confused but it also reminds me of that lord byron poem uh she, she lurks in beauty like the night there's not that's i don't have many notes i mean they don't they're afraid to kill the original like bloated guy like the one character because he he believes that then that demon will be passed on to his unborn child there's a scene where that character's wife, he goes home and she's freaked out because they have goats. And that was actually a pretty gruesome scene because she gets so, like you said, she becomes hysterical about this goat. And then like the other 40 goats run away and this one goat, which I always associate with like the devil, is staring at them. So the husband goes to kill the goat and she's like, no, you can't do that. And the husband shoots the goat. So we see the goat's head explode. And the wife, who we saw grab an axe, like we see her holding it behind That's her husband. That's the poster. Oh, that is the poster? That's her in the poster. She stabs her husband in the head with the axe and kills him, and then kills herself by stabbing herself yeah. with the axe. That was pretty gruesome. Yeah, as is the, the dog that becomes infected from Pedro's clothes. See, it doesn't play, the, the rules are unclear to me. For, for a film that has seven specific rules about how the people deal with the demons, um, the, the demons themselves, I don't understand the, the, the rubric. Well, and I thought the goat scene played out more like it should have had a laugh track to it when the dog, so the dog becomes affected at, uh, the ex-wife's house and that dog attacks a little girl and it's grabbing this girl like a rag doll, yeah. shaking her about, dragging her outside. That felt comical. It felt comical because we see that little girl and she looks fine afterward. Right. There's not a scratch on her. Then... When the bot, when the big bloated man falls out of the pickup truck, I felt like that should have been funny. Yeah. Well, he looks like that that fat vampire from the first Blade movie. Do you remember that? No, but oh. what about from the new Matrix movie that the, the fat guy in Berlin? Oh, sure. Yeah. Kind of like kind of gross. Stellan Skarsgård in Dune. Yeah. When that one lady said, because we hear like an alarm going off, and she's like, "Oh, they activated the protocol." I'm like, the demon protocol? That would have been a better title for this movie because that that seemed to come out of left field. I just don't understand. I had a hard time orienting myself with what exactly is happening, like a demon zombie attack or is it just a zombie well, attack? And, and why are animals and children more prone to be the demon's candy? And the, the, the thing about the autistic kid, like a demon gets trapped in an in autistic, in in autistic person's mind and they become trapped because they can't figure it out. It's like, okay. It does feel cheap, which I think is partially why I would have leaned in. I mean, I know that I keep saying I want it to be a comedy even though that's not what they were doing, but I think the production value lends itself to that. And sure. The way a lot of the, like the acting lends itself to that. Uh, the green screen work when they're in the pickup truck is laughable. Yeah, there's bad. some shoddy green screen. Work. So then, to me, it's like I mean, I would have abandoned any sense or any hope of making a serious like horror flick and just go the comedy route. Sure, especially because the story itself is kind of familiar. Yeah, I don't have anything else. No, <laughs> sorry to these people. What would you give this movie? One and a half. I would give it one and a half out of five. Hit the thanks button, listen to our podcast. Bye.